Hello and welcome to Mr. Castillo's art class. My name is Juan Castillo. I'll be your art teacher for the semester. You're supposed to be in room L204. So let me tell you a little bit about myself before we get started. Um, my name is Juan Manuel Castillo Guerrero. I graduated from 1998 at Nixon High School. And as you can see, there's a gap between Nixon and Laredo Community College graduation. That's because after college, I started working odd jobs, um, eventually going back to school because of my wife's insistence. So here I am. And uh, then two years later, I graduated from TAMIU in the year 2014. Around you can see some photographs of my family and myself of uh, recent trips, uh, graduations, and uh, quinceañeras we attend. So uh, this is something I do part-time outside of school. I do paintings, murals, uh, commission works. I tend not to do many of those because they do take up a lot of time and, uh, and it's exhausting. Um, but uh, I enjoy doing it. I love doing it. And I probably will continue doing some more, God willing. Uh, but what I'm really mostly passionate about is photography. Uh, if you have, might have seen me taking pictures at the pep rallies or at the games. Um, outside of school, I do commission jobs for weddings, quinceañeras, parties, things like that. Uh, just uh, to keep busy, it's something I enjoy doing. And um, I have grown to do it for for many, many uh, young ladies and couples. Um, and they like my work, so I continue doing it. So when next time you see me around a pep rally or at a game, just smile and wave, and I'll gladly take a photograph of you. On the bottom screen, there's Kike Sanchez and Rodrigo. Uh, football players, and Miss Campos is up top, uh, math teacher here at Chigarroa, and on the right-hand side, Garrita, who's a quinceañera, and uh, a couple, Martin and Jenny, who hired me to be their photographer at their wedding. So uh, this is a photograph of our most recent vacations up in Quantico, Virginia, where we went to visit my son, who is in the Marines, there, my family and I spent a week uh, in a hotel room, and we were cozy, and we were together, and we were happy. So this is just a reminder of where our family is together. That's where home is. So we're enjoying the football game. My son's playing Fortnite, and my girls are just there hanging out. They were just playing some cards, some Uno game cards, and... Danny, my oldest son over there, is checking his phone. He couldn't keep his eyes off his phone like many of you can keep your eyes off your phone. So let's get started. Uh, this is my wife, Suhei. She's the math teacher next hall. Uh, she's in K308. She's been my wife for 18 years, and we've been together for almost 20 uh, we, made, we met in the uh, year 1989. We were both working together at uh, United Artists Movie Theaters. And uh, we started dating, and one, in the, one thing led to another, and now uh, we're a happily married couple. She did graduate from here in Cigarroa back in 1995. And then in the year 2001, she graduated from TAMIU. Uh, principal back then, Mr. Guzman, offered her a job as a math teacher, and she took it, and she's been here ever since. This will be her 18th year working here at Cigarroa. She loves going out to vacations, um, and she has also been inducted a Toro legend back in the year 2013. If you don't know what a Toro legend is, it is someone that has been recognized by their alma mater as uh, somebody who has been a successful member of society uh, with a professional degree, such as my wife. So maybe one day you, when you have been a productive member of society and have become a fresh professional, you might be recognized as a total angel, total legend by Cigarroa High School. Moving on to my son, Danny. My oldest son, Danny, is a Marine in, based in Quantico, Virginia. 
He will be done in October of uh, 2018 with his duties, and he'll be coming back home uh, so he can go back to Austin and study art at the Art Institute. He is my oldest, and he's away from home, and he was the one who went to visit during this winter vacation. He also graduated from here, from Cigarroa High School, back in 2015, and was in band. So just like his father, he's an artist, and he will continue his artist love by attending the Art Institute. Moving on to my oldest daughter, Suhei Castillo. She's a sophomore here at Cigarroa High School. She does help me with my photography jobs, um, and she recently learned how to drive. I taught her how to drive. So she is around, so when you see her, say hello, Suhei. Um, she is my baby, and I love her very much, so uh, you know, be nice to her. Moving on to my son, Moises, uh, my youngest son, Moises Castillo. He's an eighth grader at Cigarroa Middle School. Um, we used to be into Minecraft, but now all he does is play Fortnite. Uh, he also recently learned how to drive. He also helps me with photography commissions, so he has learned to use that camera well, and he is learning how to drive, and he's good, becoming good. Uh, he is really smart. He is devoted. As you can see on the picture at the bottom left, he won first place in the science project just recently uh, in December before going out to winter vacations uh, here at Cigarro Middle. He'll be here hopefully next school year. So also see CM, say hello, be nice to him. And then our last member of our family, my little baby girl, Emma Castillo. She's three years old. She's a handful. She is uh, she loves to write all over the walls at home. So you should see the walls at home. They're all written on and the tables and chairs. Uh, but she is my baby girl and I love her very much. And uh She'll be here in about 15 more years, so it take, it's going to be a while before we see her. And one last picture of my girls. You can see my wife on the right, uh, my lovely wife, my Suhei, my daughter in the middle, and my baby girl on the left. She, You see that costume she's wearing? That's her Halloween costume. She wants to wear it every day because she's Spider Woman, so... Love her very much. Okay, so now down to the art business. Uh, what you're going to need is a journal and something to write on every day. I highly recommend you go get yourself a Sharpie pen uh, because that's going to be used throughout the semester. Um, if you don't have one, I can go get one. I do have Sharpie pens available for a dollar. Just let me know and I'll provide you one. However, they are not provided by the school because the, we, I had to buy them myself. So uh, they're here, um, dollar a piece. Um, you might also want to get Sharpies, color pencils, and uh, brush set. Uh, that's just in case you want to pursue the art a bit more. And you're an art enthusiast and you might want to uh, study art when you go to college. However, if you're just here because you are placed in an art class, you know, all you need is your journal, your pencil, and an eraser. Um, other than that, you will be sharing the supplies with the other classes. So they might not be in the best quality, but we are sharing. All right, moving on. I can get this working. Here we go. Um, these are the rules and expectations for my, for my art class. Uh, first and foremost, you must respect each other, whether it's by physical touching or uh, 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 verbal abuse, you are to respect each other. Please avoid from saying any bad words and or hitting, touching somebody that not, you're not supposed to. So respect each other. Treat others like you would want to be treated. Uh, number two, you should respect uh, others' artworks. If it's not yours, leave it alone. This happens when somebody does a really nice work of art 
and somebody wants to handle that work of art and you know you don't know if it's fragile if it's wet or your hands are dirty and you're smudging it so what ends up happening is that students mess up somebody else's artwork and sometimes that that student is not even in, in this class it's from another class and you have just ruined somebody's artwork that they might have taken two weeks to complete just because you weren't careful. So if it's not your artwork, leave it alone. Uh, make sure you follow the dress code and make sure you don't wear any torn jeans or any clothes that may have inappropriate images or clothes that expose too much skin. Please cover up yourselves and dress accordingly. Um, also be here and on time. Uh, daily attendance is important and being here on time, it's important. So I know that uh, there are complications that may cause you to be tardy. You need to make me aware of those. But if you are tardy because you are just hanging out outside or hanging out with your boyfriend or girlfriend, uh, that is not acceptable. So be here on time. Make sure to pay attention and take notes because uh, we teach uh, once and then we work for something for about a week or two weeks and I may not be able to teach it in detail again. So make sure you are here and you make sure you pay attention when I teach you something and uh, take notes if necessary, which we will be taking uh, vocabulary notes uh, every once in a while. Uh, we work every day. So there is no excuse. Every day you come in here, there will be work waiting. There is no time off, so don't expect to have a free period. Clean and return things before leaving and wash everything before leaving, including wiping the tables, sweeping the room. Um, each There's a, usually a member per table that sweeps. Someone else is, wipes the table. Someone else washes the brushes. And we take turns helping each other. The class does not leave or the table does not leave until the room has been left to my satisfaction and everything has been picked up. So make sure that we all clean because the custodians or I will not be cleaning up for you. Make sure you participate every day because your participation is important to succeed and try your very very best because sometimes uh, life is you know throwing hurdles at us and we tend to slack off but always try to do your best people will recognize your hard work and will reward you for it now the consequences of not following these expectations are for me to give you a warning to shape up and continue to work hard and be successful if that doesn't work, we may have to have a one-on-one -on -one talk outside the classroom. And if that doesn't work, I may have to call your parents or guardians. There are three main reasons I call parents and or guardians. Reason number one, you are your attendance is uh, getting higher. So you might start getting too many absences. And it's something I need to contact your parents for. After three absences, I will contact your parents. Uh, reason number two, you are failing my class because you have not turned in work or your work is under, uh, under standards. So if you're failing my class, you, I will contact your parents. And reason number three, you're simply misbehaving and you are not paying attention or you are being disrespectful. So those are the three main reasons I call parents. If calling your parents doesn't work, then we may have to um, call you. I, if talking to you doesn't work, we may have to call your uh, parents again and come and request a parent um, conference and talk to them one on one, including yourself here to figure out why you are not following or um, meeting expectations. If that doesn't work, we might have an administrator and a parent-teacher conference and follow the chain of command and follow the, uh, the consequences guidelines for you to become successful in my class. So uh, please follow my expectations and rules and you should be fine and be passing the class with a good score. So moving on to 
the so just a reminder what it takes to get a good grade. Well, you must work, 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 work. <laughs> All right, moving on. Um, the grading policy is 50% for projects and 50% for activities and daily work. Projects are test grades and uh, they will count uh, much more than your daily activities. Some projects will take us more than a few days to complete. Some may take a week, some two weeks, and some up to three weeks. And activities are something that we get done much faster, usually during a class or a couple of days. Uh, but you will be notified when it's an activity versus a project. So just a reminder, activities are daily assignments and projects are tests. So uh, when I grade projects, it's based on certain criteria. Uh, first of all, uh, are you following directions or doing what I ask you to do? based on you know what we're doing that week if i ask you to draw a city landscape and you turn in something completely different that city landscape well that is completely wrong because i didn't ask for for that i asked for a specific thing um, if you are original and creative or did you just copy something from the internet if you just copy something from the internet you are plagiarizing and that is unacceptable you may borrow images and you must you can combine things but if you copy something exactly like you find on the internet that is unacceptable and that will be rejected and turn it for a zero return for a zero you must work hard and persevere if you are just sitting there for two weeks not doing anything and expect to turn in something the last day of allowed time then that is going to affect your score drastically. So you must use your time wisely and work with the time given. Um, if your work is nice and neat and clean, or if you turn in something dirty and scrappy and folded, that is also going to affect your grade. And of course, your cooperation and attitude. Were you having a positive attitude during the project? Are you here on time? Are you following expectations? If you do so, you will get a good grade. Otherwise, your that will that might cause your grade to lower if you are not following directions. Um, so just a reminder, if you give me bare minimum work, you get a bare minimum grade. Um, if you are an artist and do a good job, then congratulations, you'll be getting a good grade in class. But if you are not an artist, uh, you don't know how to draw, you're always stressful because you can't do certain art things and you hate art. Well, guess what? If you work hard and you give it all, I will still reward you with a good grade. Uh, that is if you try hard. So you may turn in something that not that is not very artistic, but I saw you working hard at it. You will be fine in my class. So basically, if you do your work in my class, you should you will pass. The problem is when you don't do your work, then that's how students have failed. Uh, attendance is very important. Um, if you're absent nine times or more, you will lose credit. Um, after three absences, I will have to contact your parents and turn in referrals. You must be responsible for any missed work. If you are absent that day for whatever reason, personal illness, or simply you had a uh, and a game or a school, something that you had to be out, then you still have to be, you have to make up the work that you missed. Uh, you must bring an absence slip. If you are not physically in my room, then you are absent. It doesn't matter that if you're in school so with another teacher, you must be in my class to be marked present. If I mark you present and you're not in my class, I could get in trouble because I really don't know what you might be doing outside of class. So to avoid any problems, you must come and check with me first. And if I can, I will give you permission to go to another class and make up work for whatever reason. Um, but if you don't check with me first and I don't give you a note, then you will be marked absent and I will have to contact your parents because you could be considered skipping. So please don't be tardy because if you are tardy, that it gets on my nerves and I will lose respect for you. 
and I will have to contact your parents or you may have to contact your parents in front of the class and we don't want, want to avoid those problems. So be here on time or I will be getting after you. The restroom and drinking fountain, water fountain policy. Only one student can go at a time and you must be courteous of others' needs because if you take too long and somebody else in here wants to go to the restroom and they can't go because you're out there abusing the privilege. So make sure you make it quick, make it fast, and uh, and make it uh, so that others can go to the restroom. Uh, going out to drinking water is the same thing. If somebody's in the restroom and you want to drink water, you got to wait for that person to come back and and uh, so you can get the pass and go to drink water. Uh, if you are dishonest with me and your intentions to go out to the restroom, you will be banned from going to the restroom for the rest of the semester. That, is say, that includes you asking to go to a restroom and you are going out to buy chips or candy or to the, with boyfriend or girlfriend, or you're just simply walking around the campus. If I catch you being lying to me, you will not be going out to the restroom or out at all to to from my classroom for the rest of the semester. So, but if you are honest with me and your intentions, I will cut you some slack and allow you to go buy some chips or go talk to your boyfriend outside the classroom. But that's only if you're honest with me. If you lie to me, then you will not you will lose all privileges. Make sure that you're quiet for the announcements and stand up for the pledge of allegiance and be respectful. If you don't believe in uh, honoring the flags, then just stand up and be quiet. We should be respectful for others. Also, when announcements come on, make sure you are quiet. When there is a fire drill evacuation, we will leave our room to our right and head out to Zacateca Street. And when we get outside in the fork where the, where the sidewalk splits, we will go to the right and then to the left and proceed out to Zacatecas. And you must stay there until designated to come back in. And if you do not come back to class, you will be marked absent. Lockdowns uh, are where we turn off the lights, lock the doors, and make sure that we are quiet. Because if it's a real thing, we want to avoid being in trouble. So we will hide in the in the east and the west wall against the board and you must stay there quietly waiting for instructions. The electronic devices. If your device is on the table, even though it's not being used, I will confiscate it. If you are caught using your phone, I will confiscate it. And I may return it at the end of the class or may return it at the end of the day, depending on the circumstance. Also, I may have to turn it into the front office, also depending on circumstance. If you are caught using your phone, well, you're not supposed to, I will ask for you to turn it in. If you refuse to turn it in, then I will contact security and give you a referral and you'll be escorted to the office where in the office you will have to answer to one of the administrators. I will not haggle with you. I will not fight with you. You just simply turn it in or simply don't. There'll be times where we will be allowed to use it for art ideas and um, or listen to music on Fridays, but that's only when I allow you to. Behind my desk, there's a charging station. You are welcome to put your device there and charge it while class is going on. You don't have to ask permission. You just put it there and let it charge. Make sure you dress appropriately. Follow all dress codes, okay? Remember, no torn jeans or inappropriate clothing or exposing clothing. So the daily agenda is that every day you get your journal, you do your journal you get you, you for six minutes, so then you get the materials needed to continue or start that new art project or assignment or activity, and you ask for help as needed, and then uh, about five minutes, five to ten minutes before class, depending on what we're doing, I will let you know that it's time to clean up, 
and uh, remain seated until I dismiss you. The bell does not dismiss you. I dismiss you. Make sure you put your name and date on all the projects. It's really difficult to grade when something doesn't have a name and then uh, have a bunch of students with zeros because they all forgot to put their name on their work of art. So that might reflect on your skyward and you might not be very happy that you have a zero when you know you did your work, but you simply forgot to put your name on it. Then if you don't put your name on it, somebody might claim it's theirs and there's no proof that you did it. So somebody else might get credit because you forgot to put your name. So make sure you do that. Uh, make sure that, uh, well, the state gives us a list of things we're supposed to teach in our class, like just like every subject. And these are the things that I will be teaching you throughout the semester in art class. So the state of Texas is the one that gives me these ticks and tells me what to teach you all here. So almost being done. Uh, what does art teach? Well, art teaches many things. First of all, foremost, it teaches problem solving skills. It teaches you to find solutions outside the box. In real life, you will be working. Well, I was, I was always saying uh, art teaches problem solving skills. There will be many times where you'll be faced alone with a situation that you may have problems finding a solution for it, but guess what? It's a, it's a doggy dog world, so you must figure it, figure it out. So in this class, you will be faced with situations that you may not exactly know what to do, and it's up to you to figure it out. Art teaches imagination and creativity. Many times one loses imagination and creativity because almost everything has been done art-wise. All superheroes have been invented, all manners of artwork have been invented, and it's really difficult to be creative in this day and age, but guess what? You have to come up with original ideas, so it, it forces you to be creative and not rely on the internet or television for ideas. Art teaches you to be a team player. Uh, you may be working in projects where you are not going to be working with your friends and once you get out there in the real world and get a job well guess what all those people that work with you are total strangers and you must learn how to build relationships and figure out to how to work with other people and you should give it a chance because many people that's how they meet their significant others i for example met my wife at where i used to work at the united artist and of course i didn't know her and now we are married so many of you might find your significant other where you will end up working and throughout the semester we'll we'll learn more stuff about art including skills and how to combine colors how to draw how to do shadings and how to do sculptures and many many things like that all right well these are the elements and principles of design these are some of the main ideas we'll be covering uh, uh, these will be based off works and projects and activities for example we'll be doing works with lines we'll learn how to mix colors values is how to do shading textures, space, how to, how to do three-dimensional works of art, how to balance works of art, how to bring emphasis in a work of art, you know, patterns, patterns in your clothing, patterns in the walls, and unity, how to unite things. So we we're working with these along with, you know, your traditional drawing, painting, sculpting, and printmaking. So this is a video, and you have a chance to go to this video. It's a video with Seth Rogen and, and uh, the other guy from the popular movies um, on what is art to you. Um, let me see here. Uh, this is a burger. Please strive to give me a burger uh, like this and not something like that. Okay, We all get this type of burger, and we get disappointed. Uh, please try for the nice burger.
All right, this is Pablo Picasso. Uh, every child is an artist. The problem is how to remain an artist once you grow up. Uh, take the quote and figure out what it means. It means, to me, it means that, uh, that one loses itself as they grow up because they lose imagination. So don't lose your imagination. Here's some more quotes by artist Pablo Picasso. Pause if you need to read them. And I like this one. First, learn the rules like a pro so you can break them like an artist. Learn how to, before you learn how to walk, you must learn how to crawl. And before you know how to run, you must learn how to walk. So this is a beginner's course and where you will learn the basic rules so you can become a better artist. And the following are pictures of classmates working on their projects, having fun, uh, and... Uh, striving to to be good students as you can see some some these are some of the students you might recognize your friends uh, we'll be doing life drawing where you know we'll have somebody pose and uh, here's another pose of somebody uh, we're, we're doing life drawing and and still life drawings and shading and painting and paper mache and as you can see, their smiles and all their faces because we do tend to have fun doing these activities. And they're really into them. And you can see the concentration on, on them. And look at this beautiful work of art, taking their time to do it nice and right. Using the color wheel as reference for their artwork. And these are some city landscapes. Uh, we use line, space, and balance to make these. You will learn how to make these and line drawings and optical illusions and sand tangles. And then here's another class where you're already having fun. And then at the end of the semester, you're a good student. You get an A, you get a certificate from me, like these girls and that guy and these four students right here. And then uh, the end of semester, we, our last project will be the armor made out of cardboard. And that is a real fun project. We all get into it. And uh, here are some students working. Uh, the girls on the left-hand side, they attended LCC's Art Jam. And over here, we got Abby working on the hallway with her armor project. Here's Isaac Ruiz, who entered an art competition and won $400. And it's an art competition he didn't even want to attend. He didn't want to try, but I forced him to. And guess what? He won $400. And here's Ashley Alfaro winning the Christmas card contest. And in the next slide, Carla also won this same Christmas card contest and this other art contest that you see her on. So I usually get a lot of winners. Here's Susie Verrones winning first place. And I also think she got uh, like $300 for her artwork. And, you know, more certificates for being good students and getting an A. So not everybody gets an A, but you, you will get a good grade if you work hard. Okay. Well, if you have any questions, uh, please let me know. Thank you. And, uh, I'll see you around.